Good morning and welcome back to Elmas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates. A lot has been going on in the financial markets, especially on Tuesday after USDINR made a fresh all-time high trading as high as Rs. 83.55. I'm sure a lot of questions are there for you. What next? Are we going to 84 or will RBI prevent it from depreciating? Be rest assured, we'll try to answer all of that. Morning, JK. Since Tuesday, it seems Asians have cooled down and there has been some slight recovery in the uh, oil prices as well. How are you reading the rupee in this context? Uh, good morning, uh, Swaraj. Uh, yes, I think uh, in the last two days, uh, we have seen uh, quite a bit of uh, development, not necessarily big economic numbers, but uh, uh, definitely some important statements from central bankers, uh, then uh, the oil price movement, and also uh, the uncertainty about the uh, you know geopolitical developments uh, easing somewhat uh, you know uh, the important thing was the federal uh, reserve chairman powell uh, making somewhat a hawkish statement saying that uh, recent data have not given confidence and indicates that uh, higher for longer is expected to achieve that confidence and he also so uh, told uh, you know that uh, given the strength of labor market and progress on inflation so far it's appropriate to allow a restrictive policy for the time to work and let the data evolve uh, look, uh, evolving looking you know uh, guide us uh, also of course he uh, did uh, stay away from making any mention about a rate hike which others have done but uh, he definitely shifted his earlier stance and that was uh, actually uh, leading to another spike up in the yields and also a spike up in the dollar. Uh, before we come to the specific of those markets, we also saw some data from UK, which showed uh, inflation rising more than expected, uh, both on the headline and on the core, and wages also rising. So uh, as uh, we are in an environment where yields are more susceptible on the upside, uh, hawkish data from UK was enough to push the yields once again higher, even in the US as well as in the uh, in uh, Europe. Uh, so that was uh, an influence uh, from UK and uh, even the European data uh, showed that German investor morale brightened to more than expected in April, reaching the highest level since uh, March 2020. This is the Zoo Economic Research Institute survey uh, that showed 42.9 in April from 31 point, a big jump, uh, you know, and uh, in fact, uh, Lagarde has actually uh, made a direct reference to uh, the improvement in Germany, saying it looks as if Germany might have turned the corner. Industrial production numbers have ramped up and much higher than what we had expected. So uh, it's it's one of the direct references to uh, improving growth in Germany by uh, the president. Of course, she was trying to keep away the doubts in the ECB who are pushing for a rate cut in June. Uh, so, you know, uh, apart from this, we also had the Japanese trade balance, uh, which uh, pushed into positive territory, reflecting positive impact from yen weakness. Uh, although on the negative side, yen weakening to levels unseen in 1980 uh, is also lifting the cost of imports and household consumption, uh, you know, cost also, which is on the negative side for uh, yen. Uh, on In China, uh, Biden called for uh, US uh, to triple the current tariff on Chinese uh, steel and aluminum imports uh, from present 7.5%. And this is another, uh, you know, development on the uh, economic side that we, you know, that we observed. But net, net uh, of course, uh, we did have industrial production from US, US also, which showed that the manufacturing is picking up in the US, uh, continuing the trend in the last month. Uh, as we know, the ISM, PMI manufacturing survey also had pointed to improvement in the manufacturing situation in the uh, US. So overall, uh, US economy uh, still strong, inflation uh, inviting hawkish comment from uh, even the chairman, uh, but data from other countries also improving. Now, if you uh, look at the stocks, they were, uh, you know, in the profit taking mode in the last uh, few days, uh, mainly after the shift up in the yields as well as geopolitical developments, as well as a mixed uh, earnings report from uh, the uh, companies. Yields are still holding their five-month highs, two-year making 
two unsuccessful attempts to break 5% mark, finding some value buyers there. Now traders are anticipating no rate, rate cut before September and uh, only 40 basis points of cut is expected in 24 as per the market discounting. Now oil prices uh, came off uh, after the inventories in US uh, showed a rise and also fall in demand possibly on account of weaker economic data from China. Now interesting thing is about the dollar. Uh, despite Powell's hawkish comments, uh, dollar has staged uh, you know, a uh, decline uh, from the lofty levels that we saw last week at 106.50 uh, in the last few days. Was, uh, now, one important point was that uh, we had uh, direct reference to euro exchange rate by Lagarde. And uh, she said, while we are running a single mandate uh, of uh, maintaining price stability, we cannot ignore, ignore the impact of a weaker currency. So they're really uh, at a crucial time when you know people were expecting Euro to crumble further, some talks of even parity again. All this is a crucial time when she made that statement yesterday and that actually really supported uh, uh, the Euro along with the fact that you know European data and German uh, surveys were uh, very strong uh, supporting the Euro and that obviously pushed the dollar index also below 106. This was one uh, statement. The other one was, uh, you know, uh, three major central banks, Japan, Korea, and US, uh, getting together and uh, in, a, in a meeting uh, to consult on foreign exchange markets uh, in the first trilateral meeting that happened. So this statement acknowledged the concern by Tokyo and Seoul over their currencies, the reason sharp declines. And uh, this is somewhat unusual. Uh, coming from these three members and uh, it probably prepares a ground for an intervention from Japanese uh, authorities if we have another attempt at uh, 155 or closer to it. So uh, all these uh, developments have, and along with the oil price falling, have led to uh, you know an, uh, a recent, decent correction in the dollar index. In fact, or uh, not unable uh, to break over 106.50, uh, the 106, 107, uh, 35 has been a major resistance band for the dollar index, similarly 1.06 uh, for the euro, the support side. So we have seen a um, decline in the dollar. Uh, currently, you could look at it as a correction, but uh, uh, depending on how things uh, move in the, uh, in the coming days, particularly from the Japanese side, we have, uh, I think a uh, prospect of uh, the dollar declining further as well. Uh, also to note, uh, despite those statements on tariff uh, by US authorities, Chinese one has held uh, relatively strong uh, around uh, 7.25 and uh, reportedly on higher <laughs> levels, uh, Jap uh, Chinese authorities have been intervening to keep the yuan uh, steady. So coming back to your question on the rupee, yes, we did push into a new all time high in the onshore market at 83.54 on uh, uh, Tuesday, there was a follow through obviously in the overseas market pushing up to 83.70 when uh, the dollar was overall strong. But uh, since then, we have seen uh, a retracement back to 83.50-52 levels uh, on the rupee as well, uh, you know, reacting to the recovery in uh, other Asian currencies, particularly the Korean one, which had touched 1400 has come back to 1373. And uh, the Chinese one and yen also recovering a bit. So uh, overall, uh, rupees weakness in the recent past is driven by two things. One is the geopolitical developments and uh, and also the weakness in other peers. Uh, both of them seem to have eased somewhat, and the oil price easing. All of this uh, has and technically, if you look at it in the on in the offshore market, uh, rupee has tried to break eighty three seventy three times, and it has uh, been unsuccessful. So possible that you know you will have some uh, consolidation in the USK INR and depending on how the dollar index moves. If it does move down further, we may not be surprised to see dollar rupee also retest to the support at uh, 83.15 uh, in the coming days. But essentially we are in the higher range and that should continue for some time. Thank you. Thank you, JK. And uh, just quickly summarize it. There was a, uh, there was a hawkish statement by Powell uh, recently uh, stating that the data which has come out in the recent weeks has not given any confidence and uh, it seems higher for longer is a theme being reiterated uh, in the US. 
uh, uk is another country where inflation has risen more than forecast uh, and just to uh, remind all of you there has we have been seeing higher inflation in the us now it seems other countries like the eu and uk are also experiencing the same uh, when it comes to the euro eurozone germany has been uh, recovering with the recent data and even central banker comments uh, have been uh, stating that the worst for the economy may be behind it uh, more recently the dollar index has corrected as uh, it seems even the eurozone is faring better for the rupee we did push uh, to a all time high level for the usd inr pair we did push to the all time high levels but now retracement uh, we have been observing some retracement as global queues uh, 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 consolidate uh, we have seen some recovery in the asian currencies as well and uh, at the same time even oil prices have uh, recovered so it's uh, we are still trading at the higher end of the range and maybe consolidating here for some time that's it from us today thanks for listening tune in tomorrow for the latest in the financial markets